Ladies and gentlemen, this is a really, really interesting story. The New York Times has pretty much devoted its publication to undermining and disparaging President Trump. Not as much as the Washington Post or CNN or MSNBC, but we already know from campaign emails that there are journalists that that the Democratic, well, that Madam Secretary's campaign has relied on. We know that Hillary Clinton is going to be nominee. Share my Times of Israel article below. Hillary Clinton, not Biden, will be nominee. And also share my Huffington Post article written in 2017, February of 2017. Hillary Clinton, 2020 is a reality. Get ready for eight years of Trump. Thank God, President Trump's a great president. In the apoplectic and hysterical and maniacal manner of Democrats, they're now going after the New York Times because... They're saying, oh my God, look at this headline. The headline is, as chaos spreads, Trump vows to end it now. That is an accurate statement. That's one of the few accurate statements. And then um, another online, or this is the Associated Press, "I I am your president of law and order, Trump says. Now, the problem is the following. Democrats know, (laughs) Democrats know that they've yet again dug themselves a hole in terms of public relations in terms of media message. Of course, there are peaceful protesters. Of course. The issue, however, is that cities uh, are now engulfed in flames. The issue is that there's there's a tremendous amount of chaos and mayhem. The issue also, and this is where Democrats failed to calculate how President Trump could take advantage of this politically, like any president would be able to, In times of major crisis, people everywhere, in every country, want a strong leader, a strong president. This doesn't have to correlate to the worst despots and tyrants of all time. With Democrats, it's either healthy people work. uh, No, it's either you're licking toilet seats or you're staying home and sheltering, and in a lockdown forever, and never working again. It's never healthy people can work, people at risk stay home. It's always paint every scenario as Trump is a would-be tyrant who's using the military against United States citizens. It's never, okay, there are peaceful people who want justice. Okay, there are peaceful Americans who want justice, yes. Unfortunately, they've been infiltrated by people who, th- who are throwing bricks into windows, who are setting buildings and cars uh, on, uh, you know, who, who are just doing the most horrendous things. Governors and mayors are asking for federal assistance. You can look right now, um, Whitmer in Michigan talks a big game against Trump, but she's asking for federal funding now for the National Guard. So, uh, Trump. Whitmer calls for unity. Um, So here, here we go. This is interesting. Governor Gretchen Whitmer sent a Thursday letter to President Trump asking for, for, for Michigan National Guard aid to extend through July 31st. This is the duplicity of Democrats, that you can't get a better example. Whitmer asks for federal funding because the state can't afford, her, her state of Michigan can't afford, and this is why he's going to win Michigan, Trump, and he's going to win possibly even Minnesota. Minnesota's in play now with 10 electoral college votes. Their whole thing with waiting until uh, the, nom- the, the, the convention, they're not going with Biden, they're going with Hillary Clinton. She's the only chance they have. Biden has less than half the money President Trump has. He has zero support. With Clinton, she'll lose again, but at least they could come close or possibly win. But she's the only chance they have. But this is why they'll lose with Clinton. It's same repeat. Michigan's Whitmer is asking for federal funding to have the National Guard stay longer. Then, 20 hours ago, Governor Whitmer calls for unity after President Trump says, dominate protesters. Um, and then she, then the headlines are now, you know, Whitmer is, is against Trump's rhetoric. 
all they have is Trump's rhetoric. It's getting old. Nobody cares anymore. Like, if you're on Twitter and you're... Uh, this is the word to describe all Democrats. Apoplectic and hysterical. They're apoplect apoplectic, manic, hysterical, and... Um, I, I shouldn't say all Democrats, but I should say the people who have the biggest issues with President Trump are completely apoplectic. Look up the word. It's overcome with anger. It's extremely indignant. <laughs> um, this has become like almost a psychosis in a way. Apoplectic synonyms. I mean, you can just look it up. They're, they're wrathful, they're fuming, they're raving, they're seething. I'm just going to start off. Oh, by the way, speaking of all these wonderful political um, adversaries of President Trump, share my article in the Jerusalem Post. This is very important, ladies and gentlemen. I have two articles in the Jerusalem Post, actually, about this. But I have a whole bunch. I've been published in The Hill, The Huffington Post, Salon, The Jerusalem Post, The Federalist, The Daily Caller. But... And other publications, Cleveland Plain Dealer. Could you please, ladies and gentlemen, share my Jerusalem Post article, Why Democrats Embrace Anti-Semitism and Anti-Israel Bias? Please, share that everywhere on Twitter and Facebook. I don't have Twitter and Facebook, thank God. But if you do, and I suggest all my viewers, um, you know, delete any account. Um, social media is a very, very is going to be a very depressing and unhealthy place for the next five months, six months until the ele election. But they're apoplectic. They're, they're, um, they're, let's see. <laughs> they're just, they're just seething, raving, seething, fuming, seething, raging, apoplectic, hysterical, maniacal this is all they are <laughs> so when it when it was when it was the pandemic and suddenly by the way social distancing has gone right out the window gosh when you're throwing a brick into the window that brick might have had the the pandemic on it uh, you know no, no no nobody cares democrats are not able to see what the whole country sees which is that cities now are being dismantled before our very eyes, are crumbling before our very eyes. The whole point of having a government, which Democrats don't understand, is to keep people safe from this, from a mob mentality that is, that are, that they're actually burning black-owned businesses and businesses owned by all Americans. But how, no, okay, there is no benefit there is no utility. Nobody can say, even though people do say, that, yeah, this anger is a result of injustice. No, that's not the case. This anger is not a result of injustice. The anger is a result of people taking advantage of um, no repercussions. If, if, if you're young and you feel that um, you can get away with it and... You see other people, and it's like this. It's it, there's almost. If you interviewed people throwing, you know, you know, d committing all this mayhem, they'll 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 tell you it's a sense of euphoria. They're not thinking lofty ideals, okay? That the Democrats pretend that they care for. F three days before George Floyd was murdered, and God bless his memory, and of course, like just like Eric Garner in New York. In a democratic uh, city, democratic state, democratic governor, with democratic state senators, um, he he was three days before Biden made the following comment, and I always have to. I don't want to do what they do with Trump because with Trump they have to, you know, what the senator from from Hawaii said. Oh, the New York Times is going to both sides of this. <laughs> he never even said both sides. In, in, in meaning that the racists and the bigots were fine people. He never said these people were fine people. He was referring to conservatives who wanted to keep statues up. So again, they, if they cannot paint everything as good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, not, not, no nuance with President Trump, but um, 
The Joe Biden you ain't comment is, I mean, this is the author of the crime bill. This is a person who continually make, made, um, makes horrific statements. The, art, the, the, the um, actual quote is the following. Okay, let's see. Well, if you, well, I'll tell you what. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. This happened literally three days before George Floyd was murdered in Minneapolis, run by a, a mayor that is like the uh, wannabe Justin Trudeau. But here, um, every, they're all outraged. As chaos spreads, Trump vows to end it now. This is exactly an accurate headline. And then AOC, you've got to be kidding me. Uh, why? Why? And then and Brian Schatz of Hawaii, the New York Times headline writers are, are going to both sides of this country. Uh, no, the president is acting like a budding tyrant. No, he's not. This is a terrible headline. The Times is erasing the reason for the protest. No, it's not. This is exactly what Trump wants. Uh, to erase the treatment. Then, So it's like, this is... If Then Ben Rhodes, if the New York Times... Uh, thinks this accurately describes what's happened today. I have no idea what country they've been living in. Um, they should just let Trump write their headlines. No, this is actually a pretty accurate headline. The problem is that it's so accurate, it completely undermines and erases the Democratic Party narrative, which is that President Trump is a tyrant for actually doing what people want, what any what any citizen in any country would want. If you have uh, buildings that are set ablaze and burning, if you have cars you know, on fire, if you have people getting beaten up, if you have storefronts and businesses being shattered and, and, and being dismantled before our very eyes, if you have violence and states and cities cannot um, handle it, then you... And if President Trump says... It is chaos. I mean, what are they going to say? It's not chaos. They're actually proud that it, there's chaos in Mayhem because they keep on saying, look, look, this is Trump's America. They never said it was President Obama's America in Ferguson or Baltimore or any other or, or a Standing Rock. When brutality happened and mayhem and chaos happened and people were, you know, especially in Standing Rock, really, you know, fighting for ideals where was President Obama? What in 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 in, uh, in Baltimore? What what was President Obama saying? He the, the the media was not characterizing this as this is the new country we have. Everything is doom doom and gloom. They were saying that well, you know, President Obama has condemned the violence. So as chaos spreads, Trump vows to end it now. That's accurate. They're just upset that people are going to resonate with, okay, here's a president who's taking decisive steps to keep the average citizen safe because here's a newsflash to all the Democrats that have armed guards like Bloomberg and, uh, and, and um, we can go through celebrity by celebrity who have armed security services, okay? Without police presence... If you don't have anyone protecting you, guess what, Democrats? You must protect yourself. When I got my own death, death threat in on Twitter, the police officer in, in Los Angeles told me, hey, you know what? You have to protect yourself. Second Amendment. Literally told me that. So I did. And that I did. I used to have a Second Amendment channel. It's kind of become H.A. Goodman's other channel. And subscribe to... Okay, so Bizarro World Goodman. I don't know what I'm doing with that, but... It'll be some variation of my thir a third channel that I have. So subscribe to all of those below. But wh what do you expect? Democrats know that they've overstepped their boundaries, just like with the pandemic. 35 million people unemployed, and they still try to make this moral case. They still, and everyone's like, what? why can't we open up society? And Trump is like opening up, wants to open up society, wants to open up the, 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 the world, you know, for people to, 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 to have a source of income. And now they go from that to absolute mayhem and chaos. And suddenly, 
no s- social distancing just went out the window. It's they go from Russia to Ukraine to social distancing to um, to now. Uh, oh my God, Trump's a tyrant for actually <laughs> trying to prevent cities from being burnt to the ground, and they keep on miscalculating. They keep on miscalculating. It is a complete and utter. They 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 need to rely on urban centers and major cities in 2020 for high voter turnout. That's the only way they win re, uh, the popular vote. They're not going to win the Electoral College. Even Minnesota is in play now. This is not lost on the average Democrat or person who would vote Democrat. People know, like, okay, this happened in a, in a blue state, and Democrats have obsessed over Russia, yet they haven't drafted any legislation to protect black voters or African-American voters, if anything, Three days before this tragedy, this horrendous crime took place against George Floyd, they were saying uh, that you ain't black if you don't vote for Biden. Or Biden was saying that. And then he, then he called Charlemagne a wise guy. And nobody was apoplectic or seething or fuming. I mean, Biden it, just the other day said another horrendous thing, and I explained on H.A. Goodman's other channel. Check out that channel after this. But ladies and gentlemen, it's not... <laughs> This ain't happening in the way that you see, like, they keep on, like, the schadenfreude. That's another great term to describe Democrats. Um, schadenfreude. I, hope I'm, I don't think I'm, I might not pronounce it. That be, might not be pronouncing it correctly, but schadenfreude is the experience of pleasure, joy, of self-satisfaction that comes from learning uh, of or witnessing the troubles, failures, or humiliation of others. <laughs> So the schadenfreude that Democrats had when the nation was shut down economically, the schadenfreude that they they have now, oh, look, this is Trump's America. People don't see it as Trump's America. They see it as um, issues that are beyond President Trump's control. And if they don't like him, if they think that he is, like, there are a lot of people who don't like Trump which is fine with me. I'm a Trump supporter. Like, I don't, it's fine. But there are a lot of people who have basic logical reasoning skills who don't like President Trump, who don't like his personality, but they know that these these horrendous, this mayhem and chaos is not Trump's fault. They know it's not. <laughs> they might even think it's, it's the fault of Democrats. And they know that Trump wants to open up the economy, and he's wanted to for a long time. And it was Democrats and media who said, oh, you know, for your safety, we can't. As if they care about people's safety. You can look right now. Trump is trying to ensure people's safety, and they're like, oh my God, look, he's a tyrant. What would they have the president do? Allow cities to just dissolve? That's the, I mean, the whole point of government is actually the, if we can go on to a discussion about that. Look, Democrats have overstretched their, their narrative. They keep on losing the, the the public relations battle and spin that they constantly create. And now the New York Times <laughs> basically defended President Trump with an accurate headline. They know it's so accurate that it undermines what they're trying to accomplish. And they're apoplectic and hysterical and mani- maniacal as always. Give me your thoughts below. Subscribe to H.A. Goodman's other channel right this second. Let's get it to 20,000 subs, people. I'll have a segment up on there right now. Thanks, everybody. And subscribe to, let's see, it was Bizarro World Goodman. Then it was fact-checking Dem tweets with H.A. Goodman. Now it's, um, now what is it? Now what did I change it to? Um, another H.A. Goodman channel. So, (laughs) so... Let's let's see let's see if I change the name of it again. Give me your thoughts. Thanks everybody. Um, God bless and stay safe. Every city is now on the brink of you know horrendous disaster. So just say stay, stay safe wherever you are and God bless you. I will have a live stream uh, as always probably around eleven a.m. Pacific or so uh, around there. So be on this channel then.